geological survey map. Now, I know it's kind of wordy, but hang with me, okay? A geological survey map is, is a detailed and systematic study of the topography. You know, that's the, the shape of the land, the geology, right? rocks and fossils and stuff, and the mineral resources of an area or con a country, and every state, very important, every state needs one for its use by the people in that state. I mean, hey, did you know that sand and gravel is the number one product that is, um, comes from Virginia and comes from every state? Sand and gravel, think of it. So if you didn't know, I'm gonna go uh, back one. So in order to find the sand and gravel maps, you gotta know where the sand and gravel might be. So that blew my mind when I, when I heard that. So here we go, geological survey map. Well, here's what the geological map of Virginia looks like. The different colors show the location of different geological ages. Take a look at this thing. Do you see how the, the colors kind of go from uh, on your screen from lower left to upper right? They're not like scattered like polka dots all over the place, but they're actually like layered in a way. And that's really important for the history of Virginia and uh, geological history of Virginia, because each of those like curvy bunches of different colors there represent different episodes, times in our geological history where different parts of North America collided with what would become Virginia. It's crazy. Stratford Hall is in the pink area. This is called, as you guys know, many of you know, and if you're hip to the different regions in Virginia, this is the coastal plain region of Virginia and it's made up of sediments deposited uh, when the ocean, whoa, the ocean advanced and retreated over many millions of years. So the little arrow roughly points to where Stratford Hall is. Remember that fossil that you found on the beach. As I said, each state has a special section of its government that deals with geology called the Geological Survey. Now, here are some, um, you know, logos from various maps. I got California in there, and there's Virginia, DMME, Department of Mines, Mineral, and Energy. But you can see some of the other. Every state's got one. Well, how can you find geological survey maps? You know, where do you go? Well, you know what? I mean, the internet is like amazing, okay? You can contact, you can directly contact your local state geological survey by looking it up, right? Or you can just go on the internet and query Nebraska geological survey and you will be, you'll have a zillion hits of what the geological survey is. And this is absolutely critical to begin to figure out how old that fossil is. Well, the second map, which sounds kind of silly, is a highway map, okay? Because you got to get back there. And the highways link um, the different geological regions Hey, here's a here's a tidbit. Tidbit. Look at I-95. You see where I-95 is? It runs from like top of. You can see it there. I-95. Well, I-95 runs right over something called the fall line, and geologists, when they were building the interstate system, selected the type of rocks under the surface that would best support traffic. So I-95, which gets a million, million, million cars a day had to be placed on some real hard rock. But anyway, so I-95, interesting fact, uh, separates the coastal plain, right? And uh, the, uh, the other regions of Virginia. But the highway map is, is you need to find where it was found and you need to go back. Roadmap helps you give the detailed information of how to reach that fossil site. So two maps, a survey map, which you can get on the net, or if you contact the, geological surveys in each state, boom, they'll give you that info. 
uh, and then of course the highway map. Hey, but now the cool stuff starts, right? Start looking at the, uh, so when we, when we start looking for the age of your fossil, the internet again is going to prove to be the blessing of the age, right? I mean, we, as far as information goes. So here's a plan. Okay, here's a plan. Okay, first of all, you find a fossil or you know where the fossil came from. You identify the state, okay, might be Virginia, might be Nebraska, might be Ohio, could be Texas, who knows. Find the geological survey map, go online, find the ge geological survey map. Then find out, uh, okay, where, okay, where did I find, where does this fossil supposedly come from? Well, locate the highway map, use the geological survey and, and dig into the internet. All right, so if this plan, this simple plan about figuring out how old stuff is, uh, let's see if it really works. All right, I'm gonna run through a number of different um, fossils that people have sent me, okay? Uh, many are local, but others aren't. And uh, so one of the first people to send me a, a, a picture of the fossil, they said, hey, here, here you go. Here's a picture of a fossil. Tell me about it, right? Well, this is Vera Kopak, a visitor to Stratford Halls Beach, found this fossil on, uh, so there it is. There's the arrow, right? The little gray arrow, Stratford Hall. Well, and this is a little bit detailed. Vera's fossil turns out to be, and maybe she knew and maybe she didn't. Uh, and again, you can find all kinds of identification information on the internet. Vera's fossil is a Hamapristocera, okay? This is, and I didn't know this, it is also called a weasel shark, okay? Uh, uh, a weasel shark uh, lived during the Miocene epoch. And of course the Miocene is um, deposits or you know, one of the two huge deposits here at Stratford Hall. It's also called a snaggletooth. Okay, I don't know, it's kind of silly. But um, take a look at the size of this guy. Now, uh, the Hemipristris sera today is, is uh, there is a relative called a bull shark. Okay, bull sharks. And I, I didn't put this picture up on the, uh, on the PowerPoint thing here, um, but bull sharks, for you guys that live in Virginia and, and, are, uh, and like to collect along the Potomac, bull sharks, which are real sharks and big uh, and related to, to this guy, ha can go up all the way to probably about, I don't know, 20 miles up the Potomac. Yeah, yeah, during, during the year. They have been seen, in fact, if you are know the Potomac area, we're at Stratford, I'm at Stratford Hall now. Uh, if you go up, uh, up, uh, up river, uh, going toward DC, so to speak, and on the Potomac, you'll eventually get to Colonial Beach. Well, Colonial Beach, where lots of people go and is, you know, or have gone or will go um, for, you know, restaurants and stuff like that, regularly see these sharks going up uh, in the summertime. The reason they do the sharks go up there is because the salinity of the, uh, of the river water becomes more uh, saline or salty. And so these guys can tolerate that. Plus, let me tell you, you don't mess with these guys. The bull sharks, uh, they have been known to attack people. So eh, be careful, okay? If you, uh, uh, if you just keep your eye out, especially in July and August and, and early September. Anyway, okay, onward to another uh, fossil. Jim McLeod found this trilobite, I hope you can see that, um, and you'll see it again, in Winchester, Virginia, okay? Now, I've collected in this area too, so it was cool that Jim sent me this, uh, this uh, picture of a, a fossil that I recognized. Um, the geological map, I found Winchester, right? And, and the geological map says, yep, that's in the Devonian age. Whew. 
And don't get lost with all these names and stuff, but that's the name, the geological age, the Devonian, 400 million years ago, okay? 400 million years ago, these guys lived in uh, an ocean or a bay of the ocean uh, and were one of the most common uh, uh, what organisms that lived. The picture in the middle there is of a Phacops reina, which is your classic Devonian uh, trilobite. And, and Jim, if you're watching, hey man, that is a great, great um, fossil. Quickie about Phacops. Take a look at the picture on the left. Hey, have you ever tipped over or pushed over a log or something in the, you know, like in the woods and stuff and seen something called a pill bug? A pill bug is a little crustacean that when they're scared, right, they roll into a, a little ball, okay? Take a look at the little ball there. And also check out the eyes. There were lots and lots and lots of different types of trilobites. I mean, literally hundreds of different types around the world. So but, John, yeah, I was totally creeped out by the fossil until you referenced the pill bugs, which I think are really cute. So I just had to <laughs> add that in. Yeah, pill bugs are, yeah, I used to find them all the time. And then when I got into geology, then, and paleo, uh, I said, oh man, well, hey, 400 million years ago, they had the same behavior. Plus check it out, look at the eyes, okay? These are, what does that tell you? Uh, they had to see stuff to catch it to eat, right? And look, if you look carefully at that picture, that picture shows compound eyes, compound eyes. That's like flies have, insects have. And it's an eye that's different than ours. Each one of those little bumps there are a separate lens. That's crazy. And look at the picture. I found that picture of a fake ops coming right at you too. Is that cool? All right. All right. Moving on. All right. Any questions, you can uh, direct them in and Kelly will handle them. Okay. So Jim, your fake ops, Raina, Devonian age, Winchester, 400 million years. Where else can you find them? Uh, Morocco. Okay. Uh, Ontario, etc. All right. So, and I threw this picture in because the Devonian was one of those, was a geological age that we see some of the first land plants coming in. But the, that picture I found of all the little guys kind of swarming around. I mean, again, if you didn't catch uh, one of the other Science Saturdays, a fossil is a one in a million. And some geologists say, uh-uh, it's a one in a billion of that animal that would become fossilized. So again, fossils are, are cool. There's the ocean, you got cephalopods, you got some armored fish there, it's cool. All right, now, and I apologize, Corey, if I spelled your name wrong, uh, Deltrove, I believe it's only one L. Anyway, Corey Deltrove, who uh, frequents um, uh, collecting here, and I've, I've come to know her, sent me a picture of this beautiful fossil that she found and, uh, at a Desto beach in South Carolina. Take a look at that guy, okay? The fossil Corey found is Ekphora. This is a carnivorous sea snail that is now extinct and lived during the Miocene period. It is, a, it is also a, a marker for the Miocene. When you're collecting and you find something and you find an Ekphora, they're pretty fragile, but sometimes if you're lucky, you find a whole one like Corey did. Um, it was, it, you know, it's the coolest thing about this snail, I think from what I've read, it was the first fossil to be described during the, during the uh, influx or the coming of naturalists from Europe to study the rarities and the unusual life in the, in the Americas, right? Well, uh, many people, hey, they were paleontologists back in the 18th century. They didn't call themselves paleontologists. They were they were uh, natural philosophers. They, uh, they would, but they collected these and Ekphora, and that 
print that I got there may be one of the uh, from a, uh, and I'm not sure exactly, but I think that's uh, very similar to one of the early drawings of Ekfora that was found. So where? Stratford Hall, Coastal Plain, you got the age, uh, you got this, uh, and again, the age is in the Coastal Plain. I didn't throw that slide in, but if you find something at my, uh, in the Miocene, you're running about at Stratford about 17 million years old. Um, again, survey maps, where is it found? I found these, uh, uh, and you notice a little gray arrow there. That's Richmond, Indiana. If you guys are ever, ever, ever going to go and you want to find, if you're going, how hard is it to find fossils? Well, this, you know, yeah, it's, they're not laying around all over the place. But I tell you what, where that little arrow is pointing is Richmond, Indiana. It is world famous for the fossils that are there. Any road cut, any ditch. I mean, the stuff is all over. And so I pulled this uh, this small slab of, uh, of limestone out that has uh, things called brachiopods. And again, if you know where the fossil was or have some idea, you know, I picked it up in Indiana, I think, and you know what it looks like, you kind of use the internet again to identify it, the locality. And then of course you got the roadmaps, you can always go back or you can tell other people about it. This is cool. A guy, Bob Garfield um, sent this and, and Bob, if you're watching and I got this mis, misnamed as a perch, uh, call in, buddy. But uh, this is one of the uh, from the Green River deposits of Wyoming, and the Green River deposits have yielded some of the most beautiful fish fossils. Also, other stuff that fell in the water, like bats. You know, they got the, one of the first bats fossils ever found was in the, uh, also found in the Green River area. So, Bob, great picture. Kim Kreitz uh, also ca came here from uh, to collect along the Stratford Beach, and she found these two th two fossils. And Kim, you may know what they are. Again, it's in the coastal plain of of Virginia, um, Miocene deposits, probably Calvert formation. Okay, you got a shark vertebra. Remember, sharks are cartilaginous. That means they're they don't have bones. Okay, sharks. Uh, uh, there are the easy, well, it's the teeth obviously preserve the best, but uh, other parts of the shark also preserve uh, cartilaginous. And in between, their spine is not made up of bone, is made up of cartilage. Okay, that's a shark vertebra. Okay, the thing on the right is pronounced epiphysis. Okay, and it's a growth plate that is between the vertebra of a of a bony mammal. And this uh, epiphysis uh, can be found in dolphins and, and uh, any kind of uh, 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 cetacean, um, a whale or a whale-like or dolphin-like animal. These, these are um, uh, uh, fairly common. Some people call them cookies. You know, I, I don't know. I prefer to use the idea of epiphysis. Jim McLeod, who, is, uh, who had the trilobite fossil, also found on the lower right of your screen, this mold, okay, of the Chesapecten nephrons, okay? Shallow seas, mid-Atlantic, Miocene, uh, right? Coastal plain. Uh, I threw the picture of the modern day scallop in there on the left. Uh, the uh, modern day scallops, they even have eyes. And I don't think, I didn't get a picture of one that had it. I mean, the eyes circle the, the, uh, the actual ribs of the different uh, portions of the shell. But uh, again, so where'd you find it? Where, and then research back, how old is it? So here's the plan. If you got, if you got a fossil, know the state, Locate a geological survey, try to figure out, okay, where it might be from, okay? 
Now you may have to use the pictures of the fossils from the state to isolate the actual geological time too. But then, you know, if you wanna go back or you wanna tell people about it, you got the highway map, you can always find it. And then you're digging into the research on the internet. Okay, now the, you know, I didn't put up my uh, email here. If you have other questions, it's jbachman at stratfordhall.org. Uh, the letter J, Bachman, B-A-C-H-M-A-N, at stratfordhall.org. If you have other pictures that you want to send, uh, we can do it like offline, so to speak. Okay, so that's it. That's it. And I hope you enjoyed it. So awesome. I am going back to handling any any questions you might have. Kelly D. I'm trying to call him. Okay. I'm <laughs> this back. is a hybrid. Are you there? I'm here. Okay, fantastic. All right, we got some questions. That was awesome, by the way. Okay, I can't. You got to. Uh, I got. Let's uh, make sure I can hear him. That's all. Let me see here. Thank you for asking the questions. Hey, you can ask anything you want. I mean, I got plenty of fossils here, you know, so uh, um, of various kinds. All right, the questions are in the chat. Can you hear me, John? Yes. Okay, let me see here. Um, you guys could, the, the, attendee, the, the attendees put the questions in the question and answer, not the chat, that would make it easier. Um, somebody asked if we're gonna be sending a link again. Yes, you will get the, the link and you can share it with your grandchildren. Charles Hart wants you to define fossil. How does fossilization occur? How does fossilate, fossilization occur? Yeah, and well, how would you describe okay, a fossil? I'm gonna boil it down really quick, okay? Number one thing, water. You generally need water. You need the, uh, you, because water will transport the dead animals someplace. The dead animals then are covered up by sediments. Um, hey, I did hear an amazing fact, guys, about fossilization, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, how, how did it get, you know, like here, for instance, this is a taper jaw, okay? Comes from Middlesex County. Virginia. It's a rock now. Now, the animal, the taper died, fell into the water, was covered up, but you ready for this? It would take at least, and, and I'm not sure, maybe this is a bad example, but anyway, fossils to, in order to turn into a rock, it has to be buried to a depth of about a mile. Okay, because once you have the animal transported, it has to be buried and then the animal's tissue has to be replaced by mineral soap or mineral mineralized water so that each cell then is impregnant, has uh, soaks in the mineral water, every cell. Now this, Kelly, I'm going quickly here. This is a piece of petrified wood, okay? It's from Dumfries, Virginia. This is a piece of cedar that I picked up outside of um, um, Locust Shade Park, uh, just laying in the, in, in the ravine. It is a rock, but it would have had to have been buried to a great depth so that the heats and pressures at, can allow the mineral waters to replace the cells. I hope that's okay. Is that pretty good? Right. Yeah, no, that, that was great. And we're getting some fun comments about people finding fossils. And someone, Kathy, says that after Sandy's storm, a lot of fossils were found. So I think yeah. when hurricanes and stuff comes through, they kind of, oh, you know, yeah. bring some stuff to the surface, right? Oh, really? 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 Any other questions? Any other questions? Stir it up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what was that? Kathy says it's like a hurricane stirs it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's exactly when uh, some of the finest stuff I've ever found have come <laughs> after uh, major hurricanes along the Atlantic coast. Yeah, um, sure. So, all right. That's pretty cool. 
So do you wanna, at some point, for those of you that are listening, um, one day we're gonna have to bring them into collection storage and show everybody the, the big kahuna that's down there. <laughs> what, the, the whale? Yeah. Yeah, again, you know, the whole thing about fossils is, you know, I, I've been telling this story so long that when I was a kid, my friend, of course it was, wasn't paleontology, it was archeology, span but it gives you an idea. I really thought that, that if you were gonna be an archeologist, you could find evidence of people anywhere, including your own backyard, you know, and that's not true. You have to research where you're gonna go. You have to, you know, that's why the geological survey maps and the highway maps are invaluable. And if you're a parent or if you're into this stuff, hey man, all you have to do, I mean, think of how, this is a, you can, in Virginia, you can collect along any state maintained road, okay? Just as long as you're not a hazard to traffic, like don't stop in the lane, you know, but pull off the side, you can collect along the road, okay? Be observant of, 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 um, of uh, trespassing signs, but there is an easement in Virginia that, that, you, that people can pull off on the side of the road and, and look for stuff. That's really interesting. So Lisa has a question, a statement and then a question. I have some fossils from my aunt and uncle's home on a canal in Bradenton, Florida. They look like bones of a manti or a dugong. Forgive yeah. my pronunciation. Do I use the geological map to try to figure it out? Yeah, well, okay. So, hey, you, you're already halfway, better than halfway there. Bradenton, Florida, right? Pull out the map, <clears throat> get the geological map or get the highway map, find out where, I'm not sure where it is, but locate it, right? And then then go, okay, I know where that is. If I, and here is a geological map. Oh, it's in the Pliocene deposits or it's in the, you know, and Florida, which has been buried many, many times or inundated by the ocean many times over the eons, right, has, uh, marvelous fossils. And if it's a dugon or a manatee, um, uh, that's really cool. That's really cool. And then Pat Knock. Hi, Pat. Good attendee there. Um, lots of our programs. There's a lot of bog iron at Stratford. Looks like fossils. I've dug up so much bog iron doing archaeology. It's not even funny. You want to take a second and talk about bog iron? Yeah, bog iron. I tell you what, bog iron is forming now. Maybe not at Stratford Hall. But if you go to the right environment, the bog iron, the, the iron in the soil, the, the eroded iron minerals, right, that are, that are eroding in and then are carried by groundwater, um, form into nodules, okay, into, yeah, I mean, they're all over the place. I got some huge pieces of, of bog iron. Bog iron is, um, uh, as I said, is forming now. So, and actually was cultivated by, um, by um, paleolithic hunters and people who would find it and use it. Bog iron was actually, uh, so bog iron is a mineral precipitant. That's the official thing. It's, it precipitates out into and, and forms the blobs uh, on top of harder surfaces. So when you find bog iron, you're finding uh, the evidence of a swamp. Yeah, that's I, when I've found it on sites. It's been in yeah. swampy areas. Yeah. All right. We have also people that are raising your hand. Just go ahead and type your, <clears throat> excuse me, type your questions in the Q&A or your comments in the chat. We've got a question from Linda. She says, how old are the shark's teeth at Stratford? And um, have, have, how many have you found or how many are there? Untold thousands have been found, right? If you go back to the early native Virginians here, and we've actually found uh, shark's teeth uh, in archeological digs in and around uh, uh, the native Virginian sites, either here at Stratford on the property or very close to it, they were picking them up. Um, of course, the colonists had, uh, R.E. Lee had one on his office, mm -hmm. a mantle in, in Lexington. How many shark, the average shark drops between, um, anywhere between eight to 15,000 uh, teeth in its lifetime, okay? And um, the ages 
that sharks, if you find a shark's tooth on the beach at Stratford, it's going to be somewhere between six to 18, 17 million years old. Okay. It's if you find it on the beach, it's pretty tough. Okay. Now, some sharks lived in specific geological areas or layers. Okay. But generally it's either, it's runs from about, uh, runs about 5 million to about 17 million. Now we have Pleistocene deposits, but generally they're bog iron or they're iron uh, deposits and they don't have the fossil shark's teeth in it. Um, so more than likely it's Miocene epic, five to 17 million here at Stratford. Tens of thousands have been found. Pretty incredible. David Vaughn recommends reading the book, The Map That Changed the World. And he says he thinks Simon oh, Winchester wrote oh, the book. Oh, oh, listen, I, I had to set up here in the DuPont and I'm not gonna get up. I brought a picture of William Smith, okay? <laughs> William Smith is the dude, okay? William Smith in, in this 18th century was looking for, uh, was the guy that drew the first geological maps. And he did it by comparing the fossils, right? He, and it's called faunal succession. And he started recognizing this and he drew a map, basically not to find fossils, no. The fossils were only indicative of the type of geology that might have coal which in England, which is like, hello, you know, coal and iron. I mean, you, you needed that. Okay. Geology definitely is Good one of my favorite. Good point. Good point. One of my favorite books, Winchester's book, The Map That Changed the World. Read that. It'll, it's amazing. Yeah. Any other questions? This was fascinating. Everybody about 30 seconds more. Um, yeah, we are really excited about these these Saturday programs and John has created a pretty cool schedule that we'll be sharing with the public soon in terms of what's to come but next month is going to be sharks I think that's going to be a very well attended program I, uh, I'm going to try to come up with the so I know I know this is not going to be a new sharks week at Stratford okay I'm going to try to present <laughs> I'm going to try to present new stuff that uh or things that I don't think you guys out there know about sharks. The more I get into sharks, I mean, they've been around 400 million years. Remember uh, Jim McLeod's uh, Devonian fossils from Winchester? Well, hello. The sharks were evolving. They look pretty much like they did then. Now, <laughs> they look now like they did Sharks then. are cool. They're terrifying. I grew up in California, so we have great whites out there and I don't go oh, into water oh my that God. I can't see through. <laughs> oh my God, my God, anyway. Let's see. Pat says, what is the full name of the author? Oh, uh, uh, what? Winchester? Uh, it's uh, William. Wait, is it William Manchester? I think. If, if somebody's out there and knows it, <coughs> let Kelly know. Okay. Uh, I think it's William Manchester. And he's, and he's got some other stuff out that's just amazing. He's a favorite author of mine. So what other topics are you excited about presenting? I'm presenting right. in June. I'm going to give Bachman a break and then we're going to do some archaeology in June. There you but go. what, you, uh, what there are your you topics go. that you're looking forward to? Uh, I'm, I'm, I can't I'm, wait for sharks. I, well, I'm my background geologically is not necessarily the Miocene age. It's more of, you ready? Dinosaurian stuff, okay? And we're going to take a couple of looks at uh, the um, dinosaurian evidence found in and around Fredericksburg, Virginia, which are changing the whole um, uh, concept of where dinosaurs, we have now over, I mean, we got all of them. We got the big one. I got Arachrocanthosaurus. Arachrocanthosaurus is as big as T-Rex. Okay, and lived in Fredericksburg. Uh huh. It lived in, and and we have sauropods that um, uh, like uh, that are what? Uh, I guess they're close to seventy feet long. I got a footprint of one. I'm going to be bringing in. Uh, so I study the footprints of of dinosaurs, and that's cool because di because footprints show activity, and they are 
uh, a window into something. They're not just a lifeless bone or a tooth on the beach, which is all cool, right? Or a brachiopod in Richmond, Indiana. Uh, Ohio, Indiana. It's the footprints were put by an animal 110 to 112 million years ago. In, and we're going to take a look at the type of dinosaurs that lived uh, in this area. Um, and remember, dinosaurs are still, you know, you, when you woke up this morning, you heard the cardinal waking you up outside the, uh, your window. Well, that's a little dinosaur. Every you know, morning. Every, every morning. I'm, I'm telling you, this is their time of year. Anyway, so dinosaurs are coming up. Um, more on, um, let's see, sharks, dinosaurs. Uh, I'm going to be doing the mammals of the Pleistocene that, that were from here uh, at Stratford Hall. I mean, we have now, I think Dr. Weems and I now have uh, over 40 some different mammals. Mm. So you're going to say, yeah, they're coming. Adrian asks, what is the oldest fossil you have ever found? I found, okay, in Michigan, uh, in the upper peninsula of Michigan, uh, I found, and I was looking for them too, uh, stromatolites. Stromatolites are blue-green algae colonies that form um, mounds, like M-O-U-N-D-S, mounds. Uh, and uh, you can see, if you look up Shark Bay um, in Australia, off the uh, Great Barrier Reef, you can see uh, pictures of the stromatolites. That's a, a, that stromatolite that I picked up, actually, I took from the top of a rock wall, which I borrowed. Anyway, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's, 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 I, it is about a billion to a billion point two years old. A billion years old. That's absolutely amazing. Anything else before we wrap up this Saturday? The 45 minutes goes by so fast Was that on these Saturdays. Minutes? Lord. Anyway, hey guys, send me uh, jbachman at stratfordhall.org. Right? Um, got questions? I'll answer them. I'll do the best I can. Or I'll find somebody that can. <laughs> you definitely know everyone that you need to know to get an answer for anything related to paleo. Well... <laughs> Thanks for the kind comment. <laughs> I, I'm trying to stay hip on it, but uh, it's so much fun. And I'm telling you, uh, and it's also it's such a cool activity for a family. It is the coolest. Uh, throw some snacks in, get the kids in there and take off with a good geological survey map and a, a couple of books. I'm going to plug a couple of these. You can get roadside geology books. They're called roadside geologies of the different states. I think uh, about 20 or 30 states are now. Virginia has one. The, uh, so they're invaluable. Will you show the cover to everybody? Hold it up where your face is of that book. Should I hold it up? Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be reversed, isn't it? I think it's, uh, mm -hmm. whoop. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I think there you go. Ohio. Hmm. I got one road tripping. I got one more. I'm going to plug. Ooh, cool. Fossil collecting in the mid Atlantic States. That's nice day drives for anybody in the area. There you go. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up. Oh, wait, there's one new message here. Hold on here before we neglect this wonderful program. Thank you, Kelly and John. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for zooming in. This is always a fun thing that we do. So I will see you. We will see you in about four weeks for our next program on fossils. Thank you all. Thank you, John. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and go find some cool fossils and send pictures to John and he'll tell you what they are next time. I'll try. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Take care, everybody.